All right, Sean, the Fluency Awesomizer. This is Decoding Multisyllabic Words, episode 103. I've got four words I want to take a look at, a lot of information, so be patient. This is going to be a good one. All right, I want you to read these words right out loud. Ready? What's this first word? How about this? The third word. And finally, all right, were any of those tricky to read? Keep watching, I'm going to review those words. There's a couple of tricky ones in there and show you some information and some strategies you might want to recall the next time you're stuck. Trying to read words like those when you're reading independently. First, a reminder of the fable, the tortoise and the hare, and the moral slow and steady wins the race with great advice when you get stuck on a big unfamiliar word. And I'll use unfamiliar as an example. Think of these words as races. There is a finish line. And if you read like the hair, you might want to get to that finish line before anyone else. You'll zip through a big word like this. That's where mistakes can happen. But if you read like the tortoise, take it slow and steady when you come to these words. That patience is definitely going to improve your ability to decode them. To keep that in mind, let's review those words. All right, the first word I showed you starts with, it looks like the syllable des. Uh, a lot of words start with the prefix d, so maybe it's d. Right, this SC consonant pair, that's tricky. This could be send or scan. It could be scanned because that C can make a K sound. But when the C is followed by an E, that's going to be a soft C. It's going to be an S. It's almost like it's silent, send. So it's scanned or sent. Actually, this is the word descend. Maybe you're familiar with that word. And down at the end, I can see the word ants. This is the word descendants. It's a plural noun. The root word is descendants. And the root of that is descend, the verb descend. We get that word in English from the ancient Latin word descendere. Descendere, that C, S C actually makes a, an SH sound, interestingly enough. But this Latin root, S-C-E-N-D, that means climb in Latin. And the, this prefix D, that's a Latin root meaning down. So descendere means to climb down or sink. And French language got this, this word from the Latin word, descendre. And descendre, there's another French word where they put this root A-N-T on the end to get the word descendant. And A-N-T, that's the French root you need to know. And that means ancestor in French. And that's where we get the English word descendant, all right? And a descendant, you are a descendant in your family, all right? If you think about the generations of your family from parents up to grandparents, Here's an illustration of grandparents down to parents, down to children and descendants. It's like you go down the family tree, right? So that's to make sense of that word. All right, A-N-T sounds like E-N-T, descendant. Sounds like you would spell descendant with E-N-T. That's a word also, E-N-T is a Latin root. And descendant with an E is an adjective. That means moving down, right? It's not used very often, but it does exist. But the most common word is descendant with A-N-T, right? That noun, that is a French root, A-N-T. You see it often, that use descendant and uh, put an S on the end to get the plural noun, descendants, descendants. Next word I showed you, uh, I'm going to start at the end. There's, I can easily recognize that as dense. And is that an open syllable C? That's C followed by an E. That's definitely going to be a soft C making an S sound. So that could be sedents. And there's the prefix pre, I think we're familiar with that. You don't want to confuse pre though. That, that R can move around on you, young readers, especially if you read like the hair. So there's per, not to be confused with pre. Just take a look here. All right, so this starts with pre. Is that precedence? This is the word precedence, right? It's kind of tricky to read, it's a noun. Uh, not to be confused with precedence. And an interesting here that the, the S in presidents makes a Z sound. But anyway, we're not gonna talk about presidents today. We're talking about precedence. And precedence, the root of that is the noun precedent. And it's also an adjective, it's a noun and an adjective. And the root of that is precede, so it's a complicated word. Um, and precede comes from, uh, originates in Latin too. Precedere, precedere, the C-E-D-E -E Latin root here, that means to go. And play uh, in Latin means before. So this word in Latin, uh, that's where we get the word precede, right? That means to go before or to go ahead of. And of course, now we have the prefix pre, meaning to go be or before. So this Latin root, 
Latin word, praegidere. Uh, there's another Latin word, praegidentia, meaning preceding another or going before another. Think of like a line or something. Now, this T is making an S sound, praegidentia. So the uh, old French, the, the language old French took that Latin word and came up with precedence, precedence and added so you can see the c there the t used to make an, an s sound now it's a c so it's a french thing going on and so we have it french spelling in english now precedence so this is a french root e-n-c-e -E, but it's actually uh, considered a latin root because it goes back to that e-n-t so we see it often evidence and inference you know those words from from reading class and innocence for example all right precedence means priority or importance or to come before another one, um, to give a little context, one aspect in life, if you think of the military, there are military ranks, right, that take precedence over another. If you look at the, at the beginning, there's a private, and all the way down at the end, a sergeant major, major of the army. Uh, he definitely takes precedence over the other ranks. Precedence. All right, this pretty big word here, I can see the word ponder in the middle of this word. That is a word, the R controlled vowel sound there. Keep, watch those R's. And there's the prefix pre we are talking about. And that says rants. This is the word preponderance, really big words. It's a noun. Uh, the root is preponderant, which is a verb. You know, I, I, I'll admit I don't use that word very often at all, but that is the root and it originates in Latin, preponderance. Play, ponder, play means before, we talked about that. Ponderance, it, it has to do with weight, it means weight in Latin. So you see this uh, root in the middle, pond in Latin? Yeah, that's where we get the, the weight word pound. We measure it in pounds, all right? That's pretty interesting, pond, pound. So this part of the word French kept to make the French word preponderance. And that's where we get the English word uh, from that French spelling, preponderance. And preponderance means the quality of being greater in number, quantity, or importance. To make sense of that, uh, you can think, think about Halloween candy. There's a preponderance of lollipops in my Halloween candy. Maybe you wanted something else besides lollipops. You need to show up with a lot of lollipops. Anyway, so this root here, that's a French root, A-N-C-E. You kind of know that one. It sounds like ants, but spelled with a C. Those are the French, right? You see it often, balance, instance, endurance, for example, and preponderance. And this is, a, as far as spelling this word, this is a good example where uh, words, you can put them together like blocks, the parts. So you got pre and ponder and ants and they come together. And oh, let's stop and talk about ponder. I haven't mentioned this, but ponder is a word all on its own. It means to think, but think is in terms of to weigh something like, hmm, you know, I think that's that Latin root pond in the word ponder, I think. Yeah. So preponderance comes together and that's an easy way to remember to spell words like that. All right, last word I showed you, hmm, speaking of pondering, this, I can see the word ponder again, and R controlled vowel sound, watch those R's. Now it looks like rouse with the O-U, that's typically making an owl sound. But this is the word ponderous. It's an adjective, uh, it originates also from Latin, ponderosus, and we talked about pond, meaning weight. Yeah, and that's where we get the word pound, why are we measuring pounds? If you've ever thought, why are we measuring pounds? So ponderosus in Latin means having great weight. And English kept this part of the Latin word to get ponderous, but the O-S, for some reason, English scooched that S over and added a U to, to make this a tricky word to spell. And words that have O-U-S at the end, ponderous. You don't hear the O, it sounds like ponder us. All right, so there is an O. Is that O-U-S, that's a root you need to know. You don't hear the O, but it is there. And you see it often, famous, nervous, and enormous, for an example, and ponder us. All right, that's it for today. Subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook for more decoding videos like this. Tell a friend, a family member, or a teacher about me and spread the word. I'd appreciate it. And my Facebook page is a photo album full of reading challenges I've written to help you continue practice decoding those big words and to awesomeize your fluency. And that's what I do. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Come back and see me real soon. Bye.